Hi, my name is Lindy Jung. I am a science fiction and fantasy writer, and if you're new here, I just finished my book after like five years of writing it. Today's video is going to be a bit of a wrap up on what I've been calling Project Moths, which is my dark academia adult fantasy. I have a little rundown of just like the journey I've been on, what the book's about, et cetera, et cetera, just the basics. And then I actually opened up a Google form with questions for you guys. And I have around 20 questions. I condensed a couple of them because a few were asking sort of the same thing, but I have some great questions to answer. And I am just so excited to talk more about this book now that the first draft is finally complete. But before I do that, I have been messing around with these water activated eyeliners lately and I did like a little bit of a, a moth themed look. I also have the earrings to match. And this is inspired wholly by a look that I saw on Instagram by an artist called Neo CCB, I believe. So I will link that below, but I just, I'm going to put my glasses on so it's not going to be visible in about two seconds, but I just wanted to share that. So it's a little bit of a catch up. Finished Project Mods on March 4th, 2024. It's currently March 13th. So I've had a little bit of time to sit in my success, my win, my grand accomplishment of 2024. I actually have not finished a first draft in the entire time that I've had this channel. And I started this channel in I think August, 2020. It was a pandemic project and now it's become this, but I wanted to really take this moment because I have just grown so much as a writer during the process of writing this book. It's my first adult project that I finished all the way through. It's been such a stretch for me in a lot of ways and it's undergone a ton of changes. That's why it took so long. I was redrafting it over and over again, trying to find the right voice, the right characters, the right story, the right tone. It went through a lot. I went through a lot. I've changed a lot and I think it would be fun slash helpful potentially to talk about that journey a little bit. So before we get into that, what is Project Moths. So Moths is the code name for a dark academia adult fantasy. So what does that mean? It's an adult fantasy in a world that is very much like our own, sort of like a contemporary fantasy. It has characters in their mid to late 20s, some who are a little bit older. The dark academia part comes in because Moths primarily takes place at a graduate level school for alchemists in Paris. So it's very much a true dark academia in that it is mostly set at the school. It has a lot to do with this very privileged prestige in institution and what that history implies, like how it got to that high standing, how the faculty behave, how the students behave, like that culture of prestige universities, as well as just like academic institutions and that drive to accomplish academic success at any cost, like that sort of darkness. The main character naturally is an ambitious alchemist. She has an affinity for insects. And in this world, you have to sort of do like a thesis project that's alchemy. So her thesis project has to do with alchemy and insects. And that's pretty much all I can say. Insects in general, but especially moths, as you probably guessed, are a huge symbol throughout this. I really wanted to play with that idea of like transformation, change, metamorphosis, and evolution and how that relates to alchemy, which if you look into like actual historical alchemy, a lot of alchemy was very philosophical. There was this idea that not only were you working to create a philosopher's stone, you were also trying to attain this like higher version of yourself. So evolution and change fit together for me very naturally. Anyway, Lark, our main character, she is Korean American. She's very much an outlier at the school. This was more of a subconscious theme, but there is an element at play where she is the typical like Asian diaspora trying to find success in academics at any cost. Like the stakes are so high for her. And this is very reflective of my experiences. I don't know if I've mentioned this, but when I first started in university, I was on track to go to veterinary school. And then that collapsed around me. My school was a very, not prestigious, but very competitive research university. Most people were biology majors. Most people were on a pre-med track. I remember my first day of gen chem, he was like only one third of you pre-biology majors will actually make it to the bio track. And I did make it through, but I completely changed my career trajectory. I gave up on my medical dreams, but Lark's journey and Lark's starting out point more so than her end point is very reflective of that like intensity that I felt and that I was feeling when I first started writing this book because because five years ago, I was still on that track and it was ruining my life and mental health and physical health. I would definitely say that a lot of the way that alchemy is structured as an institution, like the path that you need to take to study and become a working alchemist is very reflective of the American medical education system. So that's kind of the gist of moths. A lot of like my feelings on academia, it's interesting because as a lot of you guys know, I am now going in to study to become a teacher. So I'm sort of seeing academia from the other side of the coin. So I have a lot of thoughts 
and feelings on that institution. I've been working on this book since roughly 2019. My life and my values and myself have changed a lot since then, and I think you can very much see that reflected in how the story started out versus where it is now. In its current form, it's very much more character focused than plot focused, but you can't really take the character out of the situation. Lark is so ingrained in this like academia nonsense that a lot of that comes through through her, if that makes sense. It's not so much focused on the grander institution, it's more like observing that through this character who is so embedded in it. The inspiration behind Moths, I actually got asked a couple of questions about what inspired Moths, so I'll answer those I guess in a little bit more detail, but generally speaking, I wanted to write a dark academia, I wanted to write an adult book that was a little bit less action-y. I wrote two young adult books, this is my third finished book. They were very like action-y, sword and sandal slash magic-y contemporary fantasy. They were a lot of fun. This is much quieter, it's a lot more literary leaning, or at least I hope it is, and it's not quite so like punchy and kicky. All of the conflict, and it is very high conflict, uh, tends to be a little bit more psychological. I can't really pinpoint any specific source of inspiration. The Dark Academia that was coming out around 2019-2020, I hadn't really read it. For some reason, just the idea of like a school setting, and also very specifically the setting of Paris, and I was just envisioning a very rainy, gloomy, dreary Paris in like early spring, late winter. That very much was something like a setting that I wanted to write because I did live in France for about a year. It was like nostalgic for that time. And also wanting to write about my experiences as, you know, a temporary immigrant in France as like a Korean American woman. So really it started out more focused on the France setting than the academic setting. And then it sort of evolved into the academic setting over time. But it was always going to be like at a school, dark academia, kind of a murder mystery at its core. So it was sort of a soupy origin. It aged over time, kind of like a fine wine, and now it's a dark academia fantasy with a murder at its core and a complex female protagonist. Next is what's next for Project Moths. I am not knee deep in revisions quite, but I'm finishing up my read through as I'm filming this video. By the time it comes out, I'll probably be knee deep in revisions though. Once I finish that first revision, I'm gonna start querying. I have most of my query materials finished already and I have most of the people I want to query selected. I'll talk a little bit more about my plans for querying in the question section, but I do want to try to traditionally publish this book. If you guys didn't know, I was represented before I got a literary agent literally like my first month in college, so 2018. At the time, I had a young adult contemporary fantasy that was like very unpolished and like frankly not ready to be signed with an agent, not ready for anything. I did like a year of revision, I put that on sub, it died on sub. I put another book on sub and then after about a year and a half, I left my agent. I've had two books die on sub, but the thing about that is that it's taught me a ton about traditional publishing. I have a strong idea of the standard that I need to reach before I query and frankly, querying and getting getting a literary agent is not the hardest part of the process. But yeah, the goal is to query, the goal is to try to traditionally publish. If not, I don't really see myself self-publishing this book. But since I've had two literary agents since 2018, and since I have died on sub twice, but also been on sub twice, I just feel so much more solid on my understanding of traditional publishing as an industry. The thing about going into traditional publishing for the first time is that the industry is so opaque at basically every step that it is so hard to understand what you're getting into until you get into it. And when I started out, the resources were a lot slimmer, a lot less people were open about it. Alexa Dunn was a game changer for me and Lizelle Sanbury, two great author tubers who are very, very experienced in Tradpub and openly share their information, which is like so rare and so special and they are so amazing for that. And I can only hope that once I get to anywhere near where they're at with their careers, I will be able to do the same for you guys because I feel like that wisdom and that knowledge, any kernel of it in such an opaque, and strange industry is so valuable and if y'all are thinking of pursuing traditional publishing, try to take in as much information as you can. But because I have that personal experience, I don't feel delusional, I feel pretty confident about taking these next steps, and I'm really excited to query. All right, now it is time to go ahead and answer your guys' questions. So I sent out a Google form or I posted a link or whatever. I got about 25 responses back. I'm going to go through about 20 of them because again, some were a little bit repetitive and I'm so sorry if I cut your question. It's nothing personal, it's just that someone else asked it first. 
first. So let's go through and answer these. Number one is from Avi. Congrats on finishing the first draft. Thank you. How do you feel now that you're done writing it? I'm really curious because I'm working on my first book as well. Do you feel relieved? Like you could finally take some rest now or do you still feel like there's a long way to go? I was expecting to feel relieved. I thought that once I typed the end, I would like feel good, but it was actually pretty anticlimactic. There was also so much happening when I finished, like I had just gotten home from Thailand and it was just a big production, right? It didn't really hit me. It still hasn't really hit me. I don't think I will feel any sense of relief until I've sent out that first batch of queries. So yeah, I guess I do feel like there's a long way to go, but good luck with your first book, Avi. And I hope that when you finish it, you feel really relieved and really happy and proud of yourself because that is a huge accomplishment. Next, we have a question from Kathy. Congrats on finishing the first draft of Moths. As I imagine it as a story with strong atmosphere or vibes, how did you manage to get into the writing mood for it? Do you have a certain music playlist or certain setup you need? Also really enjoyed your travel writing vlogs. What was your favorite place to be so far? I do have a playlist for it. It's a lot of like orchestral music. I can't really listen to music with lyrics in it in any language I understand. So it's like soundtrack music mostly that I listen to. Dramatic but minimalist pieces. Um, I don't really know about a setup. I can write pretty much anywhere. It's just a matter of motivating myself to pull out my laptop. One of the things that you'll notice about me is that whatever I'm writing will definitely influence my mood a tiny bit. If I'm writing something really upbeat and happy, I will tend to sway more upbeat and happy, which is why writing my rom-com during Nano was so bizarre and weird because it was supposed to be like fun and light and comedic and it kept coming out dark, like moths dark. And I was like, um, as for my travel, the places that I have loved the most have been Vietnam, especially Hanoi. I literally want to live in Hanoi and Portugal, which I went to a long time ago. London. I really liked London. I like the English countryside, although I only went a little bit. Those would be probably my favorite places I've been to. Okay, then we have a question from Unai Linda. What was the moment that led you to commit to completing this project? What is your biggest inspiration when coming up with stories? Is there a piece of media that inspired you to write this book? The moment that led me to commit to completing this project was when I left my agent. I was just like, I need to query again. I need to get back on this horse. I don't know why it's so difficult to discourage me from a goal. You know what? I'm stubborn. I was like, it didn't work out with this agent. So I'm going to find another one and try with a new book. My biggest inspiration tends to be my own life and experiences. That sounds really vain, but I do subscribe to the belief that like, I don't feel particularly motivated to write a story unless I really have something to say about a certain topic or something in the character's experiences that makes it resonate with me. It's not the same as like a self insert, but like I write about my own experiences. I don't know. For someone who's on the relatively young side, I don't know. I feel older and older lately. I have experienced a lot of life. People were saying that to me when I was like 18. They're like, you've done a weird amount of stuff for your age. Some of them have been fortunate. Like obviously I'm very privileged to be able to travel as much as I do, but I've also like worked a lot of different jobs, had a lot of different relationship, family experiences and stuff. Some good, some bad. And I just like to reflect on those and include my reflections in my writing. As for a piece of media that inspired this book. It's been so long that if there was a piece of media that really like stuck with me for this, I don't really remember it, unfortunately. I will say that the history of alchemy, the more I learned about that, the more I wanted to include like the random tidbits of knowledge that I was learning. So definitely like alchemy as a discipline was really inspirational to me. Next question is from Elia. How do you keep going when writing a chapter you're not entirely satisfied with? I keep struggling with wanting to rewrite it when I really just need to get it over with. I would say try to rewrite it once and then just move on. I find that when I'm struggling with a chapter, it's hard to really know how to fix it until the entire story is done or until I have that big picture ready. When you have the big picture, it's easier to see what pieces are out of place. I would say like, it does take a lot of discipline. I used to be that very chronic, go back and fix things as I'm drafting. It makes the drafting process really slow. But honestly, I don't think there's anything particularly wrong with a slower drafting process, but it does become a problem if it takes you forever to draft and you still don't have a particularly polished draft at the end of it. It's better to get that rough draft like finished and out of the way and have more time to fix it. Randila asks, what is your best tip about writing dialogue? Character voice. Make sure that the way that the characters talk, and this doesn't need to be dramatic, but sometimes when I'm reading, especially like high fantasy with a lot of characters, I've actually noticed this a lot in Throne of Glass, which I'm currently reading. It's hard to tell who's speaking unless there's a dialogue tag sometimes. Either make it make sense because the character speaking is the only one who holds 
holds that knowledge or opinion or make it make sense because the character speaking is the only one who talks that way. So distinguishing speakers is really important. I would say also avoid info dumping through dialogue because that gets really old really fast. And also like dialogue can be pretty. Like there are people who speak in a very poetic and beautiful manner. The show on Hulu, The Great with Nicholas Holt and Elle Fanning, they often speak in a really poetic, beautiful way. And part of that is because they are court nobles or royalty or whatever, but dialogue can be very beautiful and poetic and romantic. So yeah, I would say just kind of go with what sounds right, but also follow those things maybe. Next set of questions is from Blue. Congratulations on finishing moths. Thank you very much. Thank you to everyone who said congratulations. I just appreciate y'all a lot. Uh, number one, how long did it take to finish moths from the first conception of the idea? I am going with five years. It might be a little bit more because it's hard for me. I come up with an idea, I back burner it, and then I go back to it. I want to say five years. This is definitely like a pre-pandemic idea. What was the hardest part about building the world for the story? Maybe not the hardest, but the trickiest was finessing the magic system because I made it more complex like a couple months ago. So having to like insert that back in has been kind of annoying. What was the hardest hardest part of drafting, meeting my own goals. For some reason, I kept overestimating how quickly I'd be able to finish a certain chapter, a certain act. I had to scrap and start over so many times. If you could go back and go about approaching your process for finishing this piece differently, what would you change? Develop the magic system completely from the start, and then I would outline chapter by chapter from the start. And I think that's what I'm going to do for this next project that I want to write. Uh, whatever it is, I haven't decided yet. I'm going to outline it chapter by chapter and not fuss around. Next question is from Zed. Was there anything different about finishing mods as opposed to your other manuscripts, i.e. how did you approach it differently? Did you learn anything new about your process, etc.? I would say that because this is a more adult project, I was very aware that my reader's standards would be higher. I wanted this to be a lot more like intellectual. I would say that in terms of the writing, a lot of the emotion is conveyed through subtext versus like overt text, and that's something I'm going to have to edit for. The characterization also tends to be more subtle. It's just like a more mature feeling draft that just extended the writing process because I had to learn kind of a whole new method of conveying information of writing and of doing all of those things but I like it like I like the finished product so much more than well, not my first YA because that one is really near and dear to my heart, but so much more than the second book that I wrote. Next question is from T. How do you come up with scenes for your book? I have a ton of book ideas, but anytime I try and write them, they always end up shorter than I want because I don't have enough scenes. I have actually gotten this question before for the Dear Lynn slash Writing Woes section of the Writing Retreat podcast, which will start again soon, I promise. I would definitely recommend not to plug my own video or anything, but the three C's has been very useful for how I kind of structure my plot so it might be useful for developing scenes as well. Every scene should contain context, so a reason why a character is doing something, choice, which is the choice that the character makes, and consequence, which is the fallout from that choice. Every writer and every story is going to be a bit different, but for me starting in that very character focused place just helps give every scene a lot of logic, gives the plot a good flow. It just feels a lot better if you keep those three things in mind. The next question is from Bridget Grace. Did you find yourself revising important plot points like ones that recontextualize parts of the story as you wrote? Or were any big structural changes written down on the side to be added in draft two? Congrats on draft one. Um, no, <laughs> that sounds so bad. I was actually surprised by this as well, but I think because I took so much time writing and rewriting and redrafting and restructuring, there are no big structural changes that need to be made that I can see. There's a couple things like some characters being flipped around or condensed and some chapters that kind of need to be cut or redone, but those are very like granular to me that's more of a scene by scene level versus like a structural change to me the overarching plot and the character arcs that come with that those are the main things those feel almost in their final form with just a few small things that need to be shifted around or changed but those are things that are just going to strengthen those original threads next question is from angel and it's just what is your favorite line it's kind of hard to choose not because i have a ton of favorites but because i don't have a lot of favorites i will say that i think i popped off with the last line it's not a especially like poetic or flowery or anything, but within the context of the story, it hits so hard. Um, and it's just, it is finally raining in Cape Pacifica. So 
that's the last line of moths. It's kind of always been the last line and I've never had that where the last line was so freaking clear in my head, basically from the beginning. Next, we have a question from MHJ Makes. I've noticed a theme in your vlogs of finding your identity, both as a writer and as a creator, going from general discomfort at calling yourself these titles to learning to accept and appreciate them. How would you say that writing moths has impacted your journey? And would you say that moths has had the biggest impact on your perception of yourself as a creator or would you attribute it to something else? This is an interesting question because I was not aware of this theme, but I, I can see it. I think that moths is very much the prototype or the first example of what kind of story I want to write moving forward. I would say that my first two projects do not exemplify that. I'm very firmly now like an adult writer writing sort of darker but also kind of whimsical fantasy stories. I would say that moths has had a big impact on my perception of myself as a creator because it's such a personal story. It's kind of hard to take a step back and view myself as the creator almost. It's more of a feeling of like, oh, I made this and it's me and I'm it if that makes sense. But I like how personal it is to me. I like how much of myself I've been able to include in this book, both in the world and the characters. Every book I've written has had an impact on me. I would say that this one has had about the same amount of impact, but it's definitely defined what I want to write moving forward, like my discography. Good question. Next question is from Dylan. Because you were working on mods for some time, did you ever get bored with it? If so, how did you combat that? I get bored with my projects all the time. I get bored with everything. I'm easily bored. Part of the reason that I took so long to write mods is also because I would drop it for other projects, which never got finished. I would say that if I hadn't done that, it probably would have taken the same amount of time because I needed to explore other outlets and grow as a writer and develop my craft to get this book to this point. I think it's okay to do other things though. I think it's okay to get bored with a project and set it aside if you're not a working writer. There's no rush to the finish line. I wrote this book and finished it when I needed to. Next question is from Anya. Are you planning to query project mods? I know that it's really early to be asking this question, but I'm just really excited to eventually read this. Thank you. I am so scared at the prospect of people eventually reading this book, but yes, I do plan to query this. The fact that you think asking this question is a little early really indicates that I am jumping the gun, but again, I'm not nervous about it. I'm just not. I don't know. Next is from an unknown sender. We have congrats on finishing the draft. Thank you. What does your outline process look like for projects that have been in your head for a while, such as project mods? My outline process is essentially the same now because I've really honed it with this and I've started to outline other projects as well. So we do a three or five act overarching structure. I want to hit the major beats. I want to figure out where we're starting out, what the midpoint twist is, the climax, the build, the denouement. I want to figure out beginning, middle, and end. Then I'm going to get more specific, chapter by chapter, scene by scene. And for something that's been in my head for a while, I call it marination. Project Moths did marinate for a long time. So when I started to write this book seriously last year, it was coming out more or less fully formed. That is the benefit of letting a project sit for a while. It naturally sort of marinates. If you wanna let a project marinate, I recommend jotting down notes or making like a dedicated note for it in your notes app, just to write down all the ideas as they come to you. And then when it comes to outlining, you can kind of organize those. Tiana asks, how do you generate story ideas? And also, do you still read other stories during the drafting process or find it interferes with your own work? Thank you, love your channel. Thank you. I know some people do struggle to come up with ideas, but I swear to God, it is like a curse for me because I am just inundated with them. It's actually slowed down in the past couple months, but I cannot stop having ideas, concepts. I swear it is actually like a hindrance to my creative life because I have ADHD. So I tend to glom onto whatever is shiny and new and it just makes whatever I'm working on so much more difficult because there's this shiny new idea I can't get out of my head. So it's taken a lot of like, growth over the years and development of some iota of self-control to temper that impulse. Weirdly, reading other books, other stories, consuming other media does not interfere with my drafting process at all. I do tend to lean more toward like comps for the book. So for example, I basically stopped reading YA during the serious drafting phase of this book. I was reading Dark Academia, I was reading Donna Tartt. I just sort of leaned more toward books that had a similar vibe. And I think that helps to keep you on track. Next question is in a similar vein. It's from Leah. What if any Dark Academia movies shows or books did you get into to be prepared to dive into moths? Not so much to like prep myself, but more so as I was working on the draft, I did read, again, A Secret History, The Secret History, the Donna Tartt Dark Academia book. If We Were Villains was a good primer. That one is by Emil Rio. It's basically if A Secret History were like 200 or so pages shorter and it's about Shakespeare weirdos instead of Greek mythology weirdos. What else did I read? The Atlas Six kind of was a primer. I recently started reading A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed. I was kind of surprised because 
that one also does not seem to mostly take place at a school. A lot of dark academia doesn't take place at a school. I also read A Tragical History of the Life and Death of Dr. Faustus. I actually read a bunch of like Isaac Newton's decoded alchemical works. There was a lot of nonfiction that went into this book and I would say that's pretty much it. Other than that, I just read what I wanted and went from there. Next question is from Livy. I've been in a writing rut for a couple of months now. My passion is slowly dying. I still love parts, but I'm in the middle and it's a slog. Did you ever find yourself in a rut? And if so, how did you push through? I think my vlog captured this. It was like act four that I still think is like my weakest act. Act three isn't that pretty either, but it's better than act four. What helped for me was actually skipping around. If I know that some scene needs to happen in between a scene that I really liked writing and a scene that I really want to write, I'll just write the scene that I really want to write first and then sort of fill in the blanks later on. Going back and reading what I've written before, especially the more polished parts, that helps as well. So read the parts that you like again and sort of try to capture that magic if you can. Whatever works for you, I would say every writer needs to sort of experiment and figure out what gets them out of that writer's block. It happens to everyone or almost everyone, probably 99.999% of writers, I would assume. And you just need to figure out what gets you through it. And then the last question is from Serena. Can you do a video on how to write a dark academia book. I want to write one, but I'm having a little bit of trouble with the idea and starting it. I have been wanting to make more videos that sort of like teach or talk about different tips to help you write various genres of book, but I actually kind of already talked about the things that make dark academia dark academia and how to write an effective dark academia book in my Atlas 6 video. It's kind of buried, but when I was reading the Atlas 6, I kept thinking to myself like this is not dark academia. I talk a lot about my thoughts on what makes dark academia effective, especially pertaining to like critiques of academic institutions and the darkness inherent to academia. So for example, in Moth, it's a lot of like students putting their own health at risk for academic ambition. So I'd highly, highly recommend checking out that video if you have the time. If not, I'm more than happy to make a shorter one that just more intensely focuses on how to start your dark academia book if you want to write one. But also like if you want to write dark academia and you're struggling to start or looking for inspiration, the best place to find that is other works of dark academia fiction. There's a ton of dark academia out right now. It is having a little bit of a boom, but there are a lot of resources out there. So that wraps up the questions about moths. Thank you to everyone who sent in a question. Sorry if yours didn't get read. Again, it is not personal at all. And I hope you send in another question in the future. Should I open that up again? It has been a journey, such a journey. I mean, I cannot believe that I am done, kind of. <laughs> I can't believe I'm on like the precipice of truly finishing this book and polishing it up and querying it. And thank you again to everyone who said kind words about the book, the vlogs, the process, and myself. I really appreciate y'all and I could not have done it without y'all genuinely because those vlogs really pushed me through. Every time I felt like I didn't want to write anymore, I wanted to give up, I wanted to take a break that would lead to like a long break, I would be like, oh, but I have to film the vlog. And so I would push through and keep writing. Because people were watching them and engaging with them, it really motivated me. So again, could not have done it without you. Thank you so much. And that is the video. So I will see you guys next time. I am going to go ahead and continue my read through and we're going to get this book finished and out to agents. Oh my gosh. I'll see you guys next time.